Hello, welcome to the Scanning Startup with SharePoint Framework Extension Tutorial Series. This is Tutorial 1, Build Your First SharePoint Framework Extension, aka Hello World Part 1. And this is September 2018 edition. So we keep on evolving these uh, videos and uh, also the written articles based on the new versions which we are releasing as part of the SharePoint Framework. Now, let's actually uh, jump right into the tutorial. So first of all, um, you have had to install or uh, run through the steps of uh, enabling your environment for SharePoint Framework uh, development. If you haven't do so, please go and, and go through those steps uh, on getting started uh, guidance in your tenant and also uh, or installing the needed uh, tooling for your uh, computer. Now, when you have done that, uh, we can actually start the actual development. So let's create us an app extension folder. And let's go to that app extension folder. And in here, we're going to run uh, yo Microsoft uh, slash SharePoint. And this is going to start the default scaffolding or the default yeoman process for SharePoint framework solutions. Now, in, in this case, we're going to use the default app extension uh, as the entry. We kind of target SharePoint online uh, in this case. And we are already at the app extension folder. So we're going to use the current folder uh, for this one. Now, the next question is really interesting. Uh, so this is around, will the extension be by default available across all of the sites? Or would it be available for all of the sites uh, whenever a solution is getting added on the app catalog. And in this case, we're going to answer no. Um, this is an interesting option, though, uh, in a many, many levels. So if you're using the tenant scope deployment and the tenant-wide deployment of extension, you're able to actually enable your extension automatically across all of the sites. But that's a separate tutorial and separate uh, topic. So today we're going to start with basics and creating an extension which explicitly requires you to install the solution to the site to make it enabled. And we're going to create an extension. And in this case, we're going to create an application customizer extension. On the, on the name of the extension, uh, let's actually uh, use uh, the default uh, name. So let's actually use the default naming of the Hello World and Hello World description as the description ent entry for the description uh, for the extension as well. And this is going to then start the scaffolding of the solution, the default solution. Again, this is going to take a while. It can take a few minutes. So we kind of speed up the video to uh, to jump in on starting development of this extension. And there we go. Now our solution has been uh, scuffled, uh, so we're able to actually quickly have a look. Let's first have a look on how it looks like from a default scaffolding perspective, and then we're going to see it live on a existing site as well. Now, <clears throat> the basic structure of an extension, the basic solution structure is exactly the same. Are you creating a web part or an extension? The, really, the differences are around the default uh, source code, which is getting provisioned under the source file. So all of the config folders and uh, SharePoint folders and all of this stuff is by default exactly the same between the extension and the web part. Well, so there's certain small exceptions here and there, but the basic structure is the same because the same solution can contain multiple web parts and multiple extensions, and you can deploy those as a single solution to your tenant. Now, the default scaffolding creates us uh, an extension uh, for application customizer. We selected an application customizer at the type, so it gives us the default application customizer, which is then inherited from the base application customizer. Uh, so we have a base class here. <clears throat> the base class and default scaffolding is also using a dialog alert functionality. Uh, so we're using the dialog framework to actually prompt us a message uh, whenever with this application customizer is used in the context of a site. So it doesn't really render anything more than that alert message for now, but we're going to modify that slightly later. So the second file which we have here uh, is the application customizer manifest file. And this is for defining what is the alias and the component type and manifest version uh, settings. Now, in the same way as with web parts, the basic structure is exactly the same. So we have the package solution file. We have all of these basic uh, functionalities are precisely the same as with uh, client-side web parts. Now, 
The key difference with the extensions uh, and the web part testing or development uh, is around how do we actually do debugging, the default debugging. And with extensions, you actually get a serve.json file, which is then mapped, which you need to modify based on your tenant settings. So as you can see here, the server co serve configuration default entry for that one is now a page URL in the Contoso tenant. And we, well, I don't even have an access on a Contoso tenant, so hopefully it might be that you don't have access on a Contoso tenant. So you need to actually update this entry based on your tenant and the site and a page in your tenant, which you want to use for testing this functionality. So let's actually update that uh, accordingly. So in my case, I'm going to open up a uh, one of my test tenants and let me go to a, a one of the sites and let me actually open up uh, well, that's actually completely fine. So I'm going to actually do uh, site pages and let's do, well, the home ASPX is, is the default page, uh, which we're seeing here as well. So let me actually take that URL and I'm going to go back on the Visual Studio uh, code in the serve.json and I'm going to update that page URL on, uh, on the page URL setting. Now, the other things what we can see here is that the custom action element and that ID is automatically matched with the manifest ID of your extension. The location is automatically set so it is an application customizer and the test message here refers to the property which you have for your application customizer. So here we go, here's a test message property which is then being read directly from a default code and then we're going to show that message by default uh, for the end users. The serve.json is really there to give you the context and the default way of debugging the extension. So whenever we actually run Gulp serve, we actually then serve this content uh, directly from, uh, or we test this web extension directly within this uh, page. So let's actually test that one in practice. So let me flip back on the on the command line. Uh, we are now in the application extension side. If you haven't done, uh, let's actually clear this one. If you haven't uh, uh, registered the dev certificate for your environment, you need to remember to run dev uh, culp uh, trust uh, dev cert command. So that will make sure that the dev certificate has been installed within your machine. Now, this is a one-time setup per machine where you're doing development, but if you're using multiple machines, you might actually forget about running that. And then you might be wondering why isn't something getting served? So it's a good practice to double check that it's actually getting registered because we're gonna serve these files from a local host, but we're gonna render them in the context of SharePoint Online. So now I'm gonna do a call up as serve and I'm gonna do an enter. And what happens is that SharePoint now reads that the serve.json file in here, and then it's going to prompt uh, my uh, settings. Right now, I'm still going to the contoso.sharepoint.com, and I do know why that is. So let me actually get back on the command line. Let me break that, break the thing, CLS clearing. Let's go back on the Visual Studio Code. Typical exception, what I have quite often is that I forget about saving. So Control S or File.s, and now we can see that there's no a circle there. I can see that the files is being updated now properly. And let's go back on the command line and do a Culp serve again. Oop, not Culp server. Oh, that's getting now complicated. Culp serve. And now the Culp serve is reading again the serve.json file. It's going to pop up the browser in the right uh, URL. It's going to ask if it's if I'm allowing uh, those JavaScript files to be loaded from a local host. And the answer is yes, I'm absolutely fine with that. So let's load uh, the JavaScript script, uh, the JavaScript files from a local host. And that then means that our JavaScript is getting executed from a local host based on the dialog, uh, based on the, whatever I have implemented. So in our code, we were actually uh, promoting or firing up in dialog, which was an alert and hello from the application customizer and the test message and clicking OK and I'm good to go. So that was really the really quick way of testing and starting debugging of the code. And obviously, 
if you want we can do small modifications on uh, on this on this model so if i go and break that one up if i go to call up here and if i do a new message test message equals new message and now if i do call observe you can pretty much guess what's actually happening now so what happens here is that we are updating debug query parameters based on the settings of the serve.json so now when i load the debug scripts you can actually see that it's actually saying now the new message not the test message so this way i can test my extension directly live against an existing site an existing list and functionalities within a sharepoint which is actually pretty cool isn't it but that's all we're going to do in this tutorial so uh, let's actually continue evolving uh, this extension in the tutorial number two mm -hmm.